Hey everyone, it's Pacific, and welcome to a little special uh, holiday edition of SCP Archives. Uh, if you're in the States, I hope you had a very happy holiday week last week. Um, I know I spent most of the week playing Halo Infinite and sleeping, uh, and it was great, and I hope you also had a restful week. That said, uh, we are working on so many new projects right now, I can't talk about most of them yet. Um, but things that you do know that are coming very soon is SCP Archive Season 4, which is a 12-episode miniseries about one terrifying SCP, uh, which is premiering sometime this winter. I was aiming initially for late December. That's been pushed back a little bit. More information about that soon. Second, in January, I'll be launching a new show, which uh, is exciting and incredible. Keep an eye out for it. It's true crime, and I think it's going to be really, really cool. And last but not least, last week we published a presenting episode of Black Box, which is an incredible sci-fi story. Uh, you can envision it kind of like Stranger Things meets time travel. Uh, it's an excellent audio drama. It's one of my favorite shows right now. Uh, and we even have a cool time travel story for you this week. And if you like this week's story, make sure you go check out Black Box uh, and let them know that we say hi. I think that's enough rambling for me. Um, you can expect another kind of holiday hiatus episode uh, December 20th, so keep on the lookout for that. And if you're a patron or if you are a supporter on Apple Podcast, keep your eye out for a bunch of bonus episodes coming out. I have a bunch that I need to schedule, and I'm sorry I haven't scheduled them yet. Um... But without further ado, enjoy this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Note. File under review. Investigation into the event is still underway. Information contained herein has not been confirmed. Event summary. On 2024-14, the database at Site-72 reported a series of unauthorized file creations and modifications, specifically to documentation regarding SCP-5552. All past information on SCP-5552 has been lost possibly erased from the minds of personnel assigned to the project, as no individuals can confirm that the SCP-5552 slot had been previously assigned to an anomaly. The documentation itself has not demonstrated anomalous properties. However, all have been tagged with an upload timestamp of 1343-28, which is the same time as when Dr. Naman Gupta began a talk at the 6th International Conference on Physics, titled, A Comprehensive Theory on Bidirectional Temporal Travel. What follows are documents that manifested as a result of this event. Item number SCP 5552 EX Special Containment Procedures NA Description SCP 5552 EX is the Wendell Conduit, as described in a comprehensive theory on bidirectional temporal travel, titled after the lead author on the paper, Jonathan Wendell. The Wendell Conduit operates in a similar manner to a closed time light curvature conjectured by Godel. However, instead of operating like a wormhole might, which relies on immense amounts of energy to open, Wendell Conduits are open and sustained through the vibration of Wenian particles. Wenian particles vibrate in accordance to an atom's wilt. Investigations into the connections between wilt and phenomena observed by anomalies in containment is ongoing. According to Dr. Wendell, the process for generating sufficient will to open a Wendell conduit is significantly less resource intensive than the theoretical method of opening a sizable wormhole. It is currently believed that Dr. Wendell is working in conjunction with the UN to create a practical time machine. Attempts to gain further information about this project have been hindered by GOC interference. Addendum SCP-5552-1 Below is a transcript from examinations of Dr. Wendell's paper to confirm its accuracy. Examination was led by the Cronus Project leads, Dr. Cindy Helsman and Dr. Naman Gupta. Good 
God, this is hard to read. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's bland, but it's not like we... I mean emotionally, Cindy. Oh, yeah, I should have guessed. This is our research. Literally, our research. I swear, half of these figures are copied straight from our draft. We know that a lot of people have been working in this field. It was a tight race. It's fucking bullshit is what it is. Did you see the look on this guy's face when he gave that talk? Smuggest piece of shit I've ever seen. Yeah, you, you told me that at the conference. And also, he named everything after himself. Fucking Wendell Conduit. Wenyan. Wilt? I think that's his dog's name. Ah. Ah. A dog. A fucking dog has more physics phenomena named after it than I do. Well, maybe something in here doesn't work out. Maybe the reviewers missed something. It's my research. I've checked everything as well as I checked my own numbers. Our research. Huh? It's not your research. It's ours. Oh, right. The slip of the tongue. Sorry. It's all right. Helsman and Gupta return to reading the paper in silence. All that can be heard is a faint ticking from Gupta's pocket watch. Gupta finishes and looks at Helsman. Well. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything here either. It's all right. Fuck. We'll discover something else. We're persistent like that. Gupta leaves the meeting room, slamming the door behind him. Helsman sighs. <sighs> Following this meeting, the contents of Dr. Wendell's research was considered to be grounded well enough in our current understanding of physics to be considered explained rather than anomalous. Monitoring of the implications of this research is to continue to ensure no additional anomalous phenomena are discovered in the process. Addendum SCP-5552-2 on 2020-5-2, Foundation satellites detected a large visual disturbance in Nunavut, Canada. An area of 20 acres of land had become entirely black, including all flora and fauna residing within that area. Foundation personnel were dispatched to the location. Below is a copy of their report. Thomas Clark and I arrived at the scene around midday. The strange coloration could be seen in some of the grass and the trees on the edges of the affected area. But ten feet in, everything was completely black. Well, not that the material had turned black. It was more like the light wasn't even reflecting off the surfaces. The ground was sturdy to stand on, but organic matter didn't fare as well. It maintained its stability until we touched it. But even with a slight brush, entire trees crumbled. Or I guess they more melted. They just fell apart. Stevenson grabbed a few samples to test later. We reached the center of the affected area. There was an opening in the ground, no larger than a manhole. We didn't trust the ladder built into the hole's walls, so we tied up a rope and rappelled down. Everything in the hole was black too, except for the walls. At first we thought they were made of stone, but they were far too soft for that. The hallways of the facility were mostly empty, save for a few safety notices with GOC branding on them. We only found one unlocked door, labeled Primary Construction Bay. We decided not to go inside because the entrance was blocked by humanoid figures that had turned black, like the trees outside. We didn't want to... break them. Stevenson did manage to get some pictures of just inside the room. The place was packed. Everyone crowded some sort of capsule in the middle, which was the only thing in there that kept its color. We think the inside was occupied but we can't say for certain. Containment Specialist, Logan Bryson. After being confronted with this report, a GOC official confirmed that this was the result of their efforts to realize the practical uses of Dr. Wendell's research. In order to avoid similar incidents regarding temporal research, the GOC agreed to transfer all documents and computations Dr. Wendell performed to the Foundation. Addendum SCP-5552-3 Below is a transcript from the Project Cronus team during their meeting to decipher and understand the writings of Dr. Wendell. Helsman enters the room. Gupta is staring at a whiteboard. Hey, Naman. Hey. I, uh... I know it must be hard to hear about what happened. Gupta remains silent. I mean... I was as confident as you were that our work was correct. 
And while it's terrible what happened to Wendell and everyone, I'm at least grateful that we didn't have to experience our failures firsthand. Dumbass. Huh? Wendell, he's a fucking dumbass. This isn't the time no, for- No, no, like, like, look here. Gupta walks back to his desk and grabs one of Wendell's pages of computations. With the decay constant, you remember what we calculated the number out to? Something like 14 decimals? Why? Well, in the paper, it looked like he just rounded it to the three significant figures, but he only used the rounded number in his actual math as well. Well, I mean, we only put the rounded numbers in the paper. Guess he didn't have our full data sets. But you know what this means, right? Helsman pauses. After a moment, she smiles. It might still work. They haven't scrapped our budget, right? Not yet. So, do you want to build a time machine? You really didn't have to ask. Addendum SCP-5552-3, utilizing the remains of their budget. Project Cronus constructed a bi-directional temporal traversal device, BTTD, over the course of three months. However, upon completion of the BTTD, Dr. Gupta and Dr. Helsman utilized the device without consulting the Foundation Ethics Committee, the Catastrophic Phenomena Contingency Planning Group, or the Department of Casualty Consistency. Blows footage from the security cameras at the time of the project's use. Gupta enters a testing area for the BTTD at 2 a.m. He goes to the control panel and begins powering the machine up until Hellsman arrives at 2.08. You're late. And you haven't told me what you're doing. I'm doing preliminary testing. I thought you should be here for the first trial of our project. You're just going to use the time travel machine without telling anyone? I'm telling you. Come on. You know no one would let me go back if I asked. And, well, I need someone to activate the machine after I get inside. But why are you doing this? Official testing is starting in less than a week anyways. Cindy, I'm stealing our theory back. Excuse me? Our theory. It still has Jonathan's name on it. I'm stealing it back. I know it's been bothering you too. You pause a little every time you say, Wendell Conduit. It keeps me up at night. He may have taken our work, but now we have a machine that lets us fix mistakes like that. You sound absurd. But you don't disagree. I... God, this is so petty. It's not petty. We worked on this for... what? Five years? Losing the product of five years of standing at the whiteboard, arguing over simulation results, and gathering test data isn't petty. You know as well as I do that you can't control how much you change. Yes, yes. There's actions in life which set off long chains of events that have effects no one could predict, yada, yada, yada. But for every one of those actions, how many others have almost no impact on tomorrow? If you arrived here three minutes earlier, that wouldn't change the conversation we're having now. Only so many actions can mean something. And for all we know, I could be avoiding catastrophes instead of starting new ones. That doesn't sound very, uh scientifically sound. I've run some of the numbers. I'm almost certain that if I just help us come up with some of our interpretations of the data a little faster, then I can recreate everything without any significant difference up through us publishing our research. <sighs> How far back are you going? January. So, eight months. Should give me enough time to speed our research along so we can publish in that particle physics conference in March. Or Jonathan is able to steal it. Fine. Just promise me that we get co-first author. Thank you. So much. Hop in. Group enters the BTTD Traveler capsule while Helsman takes over at the control panel. After Gupta is strapped in, Helsman walks over the Traveler capsule. I won't need it! I should have as many tries as I need! Helsman nods and walks back to the control panel. That's the least comforting thing he could have said. Helsman activates the BTTD. Power is drawn from the entirety of the site, causing the surveillance cameras to shut down. Special containment procedures. Not available. Description. SCP-5552-EX 
is the gupta helsman gate as described in a comprehensive theory on bidirectional temporal travel, titled after the lead authors on the paper, Naman Gupta and Cindy Helsman. This paper was presented on 2023-14 at the International Conference on Particle Physics, after a board of foundation personnel reviewed the paper and deemed the science sufficiently in line with baseline assumptions to be considered non-anomalous. The gupta helsman gate operates in a similar manner to closed time-like curvatures conjectured by Godel. However, instead of operating like a wormhole might, which relies on immense amounts of energy to open, gupta helsman gates are opened and sustained through the vibration of vibron particles. 1. Vibron particles vibrate in accordance to an atom's wilt. 2. Investigation into connections between wilt and phenomena observed by anomalies in containment is ongoing. According to Dr. Gupta and Dr. Helsman, the process for generating sufficient wilt to open a gupta helsman gate is significantly less resource-intensive than the theoretical method of opening a sizable wormhole. The Foundation has allocated additional resources to Gupta's and Helsman's Cronus project to build a device that demonstrates the principles within their paper. The Foundation has allocated additional resources to Gupta's and Helsman's Cronus project to build a device that demonstrates the principles within their paper. Addendum SCP-5552-1 Below is a partial transcript from the Cronus project lead meeting regarding the construction of a bidirectional temporal traversal device, BTTD, as proposed in their paper. I can't believe they actually let us publish! Honestly, I'm more surprised they're letting us build it. Well, of course they want us to build it. It's the Foundation. Right, right. Something wrong? I guess I'm just nervous. Don't worry, everyone is. Except you, apparently. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm just good at hiding it. Now, let's get to scheduling, shall we? Right. I think we can get this thing done in about three months. That sound okay to you? Yeah, that sounds fine. All right, we'll be testing in three months, and let's work backward from there. Addendum SCP-5552-2 The following is the timetable for the construction of the BTTD. BTTD Traveler Capsule Design. Completed on time, should be able to activate the BTTD from inside the capsule. Wilt generation cell design completed five days past deadline. Temporal stability insurance computations completed 13 days past deadline. BTTD Traveler Capsule Construction completed on time. Additional materials have been reserved for a second capsule. Wilt generation cell construction completed 17 past deadline. Testing proposal completed on time requested a total of three different trials both with forward and backward temporal travel. Safety checks not completed. Addendum SCP-5552-3. On 2020 2 Helsman was confronted about her inability to meet the deadlines of the project. Below is a transcript from the meeting. Cindy, we need to talk. We're falling behind schedule. I know, I know. Like, I appreciate all the safety checks and recalculations you're doing, but I need you to trust me. But you know how dangerous this thing can be. If we're not right down to the 14th decimal, this could cause a catastrophic amount of damage. So, you don't trust me? No, no. I trust you, but... Like... I don't trust myself. I feel like I'm always a few steps behind you trying to play catch-up. There's something about all of this that just clicks for you, and it's not clicking for me. It's frustrating. This was supposed to be our project, but it doesn't quite feel like mine anymore. <sighs> Would you like me to tell you something that might make you feel better? If you can, go ahead. I know this is going to work, because it already has. You... You've already used it. Haven't you? I traveled back to January because if we didn't publish by March, our research was going to be stolen. January? But that's when we started getting experimental data. I just sped everything up is all. I knew what equations we were going to be able to extract, so I could skip a few steps. But... 
but that was supposed to be my job. I know, but... You were good with concepts and theories, and I was good with equations and making the numbers mean something. That was how we were supposed to divide the work. But then you just stole my equations from me. But you already solved them. You solved them last time, all on your own. I was totally useless. But I wasn't there last time. This time, I didn't do shit. But it's all the same you. I don't feel like I contributed. I feel like I've been playing second fiddle. I- I- I'm sorry. I told you my plan when I left, and you said it was fine. I keep telling you, that wasn't me. Whoever that was obviously wasn't thinking about how it'd feel to have her equation stolen. I think she knew. Well then, she was being a dumbass. I'm sorry, I I didn't know. Helsman takes deep breaths and settles back into her chair. It's fine. Nothing can be done now. How long until we're finished with this damn project? Um, if we go at our predicted pace, only another month. Thank God. Addendum SCP-5552-4 In the early morning of 2020-715, Site-72 experienced two major power outages. One at 3.34 a.m. and another at 3.56 a.m. Security camera footage prior to the 334 outage showed Dr. Helsman accessing the primary testing area for the BTTD, logging information into the main control panel, and entering the BTTD traveler capsule. Security personnel immediately ensured that the initial power outage did not result in a containment breach, and were unable to inspect the BTTD primary testing area before the second power outage occurred which happened less than two minutes after the power had been re-established to the site. Initial inspection of the BTTD primary testing area occurred at 4.23 a.m., where personnel discovered a black powdery substance scattered around and inside the BTTD traveler capsule. The door to the BTTD traveler capsule was closed, and readings from the BTTD control panel indicated recent use. Additionally, a letter found on the ground next to the control panel. Below is a transcript. I'm not sure if you'll see this, since I'm not sure what happens after I activate the machine. But in case you do, know that I'm not mad. Well, not at you specifically. I know you were just trying to get our work back. I know how it must have felt to have your work stolen from you. I get it must have been frustrating and painful and you wanted to fix that. But I was robbed of the opportunity to have a breakthrough entirely. You took my aha moment from me. And I want it back. I'm going back. I'm making sure you don't help me with my part of the project. And then I'm shoving a syringe full of amnestics up my arm so I can experience it. The feeling of discovery. That moment when I solve a problem no one else can. If I've done it before, like you've said, I should just have to reset everything and I can do it again. I don't care if the research gets stolen. At at least this time, it really will be our theory. On the back of the letter is a series of calculations and numbers, appearing to be someone's scratch work. At the bottom, a number is circled, and below it is written the following. Why do they always screw up the weight decay? Dr. Gupta, who was seen in security footage sleeping in his office prior to the 334 power outage, could not be located. Hey everyone! Pacific here with a quick ad break and a reminder. Ad-free and bonus episodes are available at our Patreon at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And now, back to our show. Special Containment Procedures The Cronus Project is to continue its research into the existence of SCP-5552. Description SCP-5552 is a theoretical method to travel backwards in time. The exact nature of SCP-5552 
as well as whether or not it can be replicated in a controlled manner, is still unknown. Discovery Evidence for the existence of SCP-5552 occurred on 2018-0704, when Reality Stability Beacons at Site-72 indicated a retro-casual reality shift. However, due to the lack of discontinuity in the cause and effect predictions from the beacons, it was determined that the large-scale reality-altering event did not occur. The resulting conclusion was that temporal travel must have taken place. The Cronus Project research team was directed to determine the source or subject of this temporal travel. However, their search was unsuccessful. Addendum SCP-55521 Below is a timeline of the Cronus Project's progress. November 14th, 2017 The Cronus Project was initiated by Drs. Naman Gupta and Cindy Helsman. January 22nd, 2018 Dr. Gupta proposes a string theory-inspired hypothesis for reverse directional time travel. March 8th, 2018 Dr. Gupta's theory was deemed highly unlikely after it did not fit any of the models created by Dr. Helsman. March 19, 2018 Dr. Gupta proposes a theory for reverse directional time travel based on quantum entanglement. May 20, 2018 Dr. Gupta's theory is contradicted by experimental evidence gathered by Dr. Helsman. July 4, 2018 Cronus Project directed to locate the source of the alerted retro-casual reality shift. August 4th, 2018. Search for source of retro-casual reality shift disbanded. Modification to current timeline deemed sufficiently insignificant to ignore. October 14th, 2018. Dr. Gupta promoted to site director, leaving the Cronus Project. January 22nd, 2019. Dr. Helsman proposes a theory for reverse directional time travel based on classical relativity. May 3, 2019 Dr. Helsman's theory is abandoned due to the lack of consistent relativistic behaviors at the quantum scale. July 21, 2019 Dr. Helsman proposes a theory for reverse directional time travel based on quantum mechanics. October 2, 2019 Dr. Helsman's theory is abandoned for being too similar to Dr. Gupta's quantum entanglement theory. January 11, 2020 Dr. Helsman proposes a theory based on standard model of particle physics. April 14, 2020 Dr. Helsman's theory is abandoned due to a lack of progress. Addendum SCP-55522 Below is a transcript of the monthly status meeting between Dr. Helsman and Dr. Gupta held on 2020-04-16. I see you abandoned another theory. Yeah. You know it's harder for me to keep justifying your funding if you're not getting anywhere. I know, Naman. So, um, why'd you abandon this one? I mean, really, it's the same reason I abandoned all the other ones. Not enough progress and too much pointing against it. I thought this one seemed promising. Really? You think that time travel based on the rotation of gluons is promising? I mean- I don't even know what I was thinking when I proposed it. It's fucking stupid. We already have gluons tied to the strong force. I just think maybe this line of investigation is worth going down. <laughs> Naman, I've been at this for more than two years and all I've hit are fucking dead ends. But I know you can do it! That's what you've been telling me for the past year? And while they're nice words, they've been kind of useless? Well, it's not my job to do the research. It used to be. We used to be a team. And then you left me. For what? For management? Do you even enjoy that? I am in this position because I want to be. And maybe that's because you don't even enjoy research anymore. And here you are telling me to chase geese. Or maybe it's because I was better at research. You know what? You can fuck off. Take my funding. See if I give a shit. Hellsman gets up and leaves Gupta's office, slamming the door behind her. Gupta sighs and puts his head in his hands. She'll thank me later. Or maybe not. But she'll be grateful nonetheless. 
Addendum SCP-55523 During the night of 2020-04-16, security personnel at Site-72 reported a sudden significant alteration to rooms 118, 119, and 121, which contained the Project Cronus Laboratory, cubicles for Project Cronus personnel, and the office of Dr. Helsman, respectively. The walls, floors, ceiling, and all contents of these rooms had morphed into a black substance. Objects made of this substance maintained their shape until disturbed, at which point they would assume a more liquid-like state. Security personnel reported three casualties. Two of these casualties were researcher Yu Fei Zhu and janitor Ivan DeWalt, who were presumed to be engaged in conversation at the time of the event based on their poses at the time of discovery. The third was Dr. Cindy Helsman, who was most likely listening to a voicemail on her phone. Below is the transcript of the most recent voicemail received by Dr. Helsman prior to the event. Hey, Cindy. Um, sorry about what I said earlier. I didn't mean most of it. Like, I didn't mean the part about me being the better researcher. Honestly, I left the project because I wanted it to be your discovery. It's just, it's frustrating for both of us to see you bang your head against this problem. But if you want, I can come back to the project. We can make this our theory again. Following the 2020-04-16 event, Dr. Gupta took over the Cronus Project. The Cronus Project was also moved from Site-72 to Site-53 after the entire eastern wing of Site-72 experienced a similar event to that described above. See Cronus Project Special Reports for details. Item number SCP-5552 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures the Cronus Project is to continue research to confirm the details of SCP-5552. While it is possible that SCP-5552-related phenomena can be explained given our current understanding of science, they have been deemed anomalous until further progress has been made. Description SCP-5552 refers to a theoretical method of travel between parallel universes with similar cause and effect chains. Details regarding the exact nature of SCP-5552, as well as the parallel universes it can access, are under investigation by the Kronos Project, led by Dr. Naman Gupta and Dr. Cindy Helsman. Addendum SCP-5552-1 Below is the transcript of the meeting on 2018-74 between Dr. Helsman and Dr. Gupta, first proposing the existence of SCP-5552. Dr. Gupta paces back and forth in front of his desk. Dr. Helsman enters Dr. Gupta's office, at which point Dr. Gupta checks his pocket watch. You're late. Only by a minute. You're still late. Naman. Are you okay? You seem a little more restless than normal. Sorry. Gupta takes three deep breaths, and then sits down at his desk. I'm just anxious. Anxious about what? Paper deadline? No, no. Then what is it? Okay, Cindy, I am about to say something that sounds incredibly stupid, but I'm going to need you to believe me, alright? Okay. I might be from the future. Helsman remains silent before beginning to say something. However, she stops herself. Uh, yeah. But what does that mean? So, I think it's like this. I know for certain that I came from somewhere that on April 16th, 2020, you die and I take over the Cronus Project. Wait, wait. You're saying I die in two years? Well... That's assuming I'm from the future, because there's another option. I'm from a parallel universe, and I didn't travel in time at all. Well, I mean, if you're from a parallel universe, then wouldn't that mean you've still traveled back in time? No, no. In this scenario, I actually can't travel backwards in time. It'd be impossible. It'd just be an illusion, since each of the universes are temporarily offset. 
I... I don't follow. It's like... like time zones. Here, it's three, but in California, it's noon. Here, it's April 4th, but in another parallel universe, it's March 6th. You can't travel backwards in time, but you can travel to a parallel universe that started a month later than this one. And that's almost the same thing. Okay. And why do you think this is what you've been doing instead of time travel? Well, um, not all parallel universes are created equal. In fact, a lot of them are probably unstable. So at certain points in time, arbitrary groups of particles will just... Like, they'll lose stability. Uh, but not entirely. Like, they go back, and they crumble, and it's... It's like the very fabric of reality just wilts away. You know you sound crazy, right? Yes, but haven't I always sounded insane? Most of what I say sounds absurd, yet you still run the numbers for me, because we both know I might be right! Do you want me to start making models? That would be fantastic. Addendum, SCP-5552-2 Two weeks following this proposal, Site-72 personnel reported concerns about Dr. Gupta's mental well-being. Dr. Gupta was only seen leaving his office to go to the bathroom and to get food from the cafeteria, which he would then eat in his office. Dr. Clark, occupying a neighboring office, reported hearing Dr. Gupta shout the phrase, It doesn't make sense! and other variants with similar meaning. Dr. Halsman was requested to speak with Dr. Gupta, as he has refused meetings with other personnel. Gupta is looking at the whiteboard in his office. It is filled with a flowchart. Halsman knocks on the door to Gupta's office. I'm busy! Even for me? Gupta opens the door slightly. After seeing Halsman, he opens it the rest of the way. Halsman enters. Sorry, I'm just stressed still. You seem a little more than stressed. People are worried about you. I know, I know. I'm fine. You know, you used to get lunch with everyone else. Might be good to get your mind off work. I can't. Because... It's just, there's so much I still can't explain. Like how I'm only traveling to similar parallel universes. Why haven't I blasted myself off to a world where Earth doesn't even exist? Well, I have some news. Not sure if it'll help or not. I'm listening either way. I haven't been able to get your parallel universe theory to work. Oh. Yeah, mostly the stability part. What you're describing just doesn't fit with anything, really. I see. I mean, we'll come up with another theory. It sounds like we've been able to explain everything so far. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Take a few days off. You said I die in two years, right? We still have time. Yeah. I'll do that. Dr. Gupta was approved for a vacation between 2018-719 and 2018-726. Addendum. SCP-5552-3 On 2018-724, Site-72 experienced a mass alteration to its molecular structure, as well as the molecular structure of all personnel and materials within. This alteration resulted in all affected materials taking on a charcoal-like structure that collapses into a liquid state when disturbed. Dr. Gupta ended his vacation early, taking over the Cronus Project and moving it to Site-53. Item number, SCP-5552. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. Research is a continuum to the stabilization of SCP-5552 affected particles. Description. SCP-5552 refers to the order of a particle. Order is a measurement of how well the position, velocity, and rotation of a particle can be predicted given the state of the universe at the time of the Big Bang. Since the state of any individual particle is influenced by its collision with nearby particles, the introduction of low-order particles results in the lowering of the order of the entire system. Macro structures with order below a certain threshold will lose temporal stability. 
This lack of stability immediately results in a breaking and rearrangement of bond between the particles to keep them anchored in their current position and trajectory along the temporal axis. This manifests in the creation of a black powdery substance that occupies the same space as the structure at the time of stability loss, but will collapse into a liquid-like state upon disturbance. This transformation is termed wilting. April 16th, 2018. I was going to pitch this to Cindy today, but apparently her whole neighborhood wilted last night. 46 houses, 166 casualties. The Foundation is trying to play it off as a fire. I guess this means I'm in charge of the Cronus Project again. Although I don't want to rush it. Not this time. I keep just diving back into the past, but not this time. This time, I'm waiting until I know my theory works. But I think... I can figure something out. There's something about this one that just feels... right. May 3rd, 2018. I'm finally ready to start making the models. I tried running my theory by Dr. Clark. He couldn't find anything immediately wrong, but then again, he specializes in generalized reality disturbances, so this isn't exactly his field. In fact, I don't think there's anyone here who specializes in this field. Well, Cindy used to. Either way, I'm ready to start putting together the models. If there's somewhere that my theories fall apart, it's here. June 18th, 2018. The northern wing of Site-72 wilted today. Luckily, none of my equipment was stored there. But they're moving everyone to Site-53 anyways. They gave me the same office as last time, too. I'm going to start building the BTTD now. I don't want to be screwed when this place also wilts. July 21st, 2018. I haven't made any progress. Fucking nothing! This modeling software Cindy used is so damn confusing. Every time I get past one error message, it throws another at me. Or I learn that I had the equations wrong. September 2nd, 2018. I've been thinking about this for a while, and I don't know why I haven't wilted yet. In fact, I don't know how I don't wilt the moment I activate the time machine. Everything around me seems to collapse, but I'm fine. Why am I fine? I shouldn't be fine. Maybe the models will give me some insight. I got Dr. Clark to help me make the model run. Now all I have to do is play with parameters until I get a lock on what makes this theory tick. September 26, 2018. I don't know how Cindy ever did this. There's so many constants. So many variables to tune. I've looked back at her notes and they make no sense. She eliminates so many possibilities so quickly, like there's some sort of an art to this that I can never grasp to understand. She was so good at this. October 10th, 2018. I think I know why I'm stable. There's only been one variable changing between each iteration. It's me, which would imply that I should be the one wilting. I should be the one crumbling, destabilizing, collapsing into a puddle of particles, but... What if my order from previous time jumps carries over? What if I'm being held together by the order from my original timeline? But then, if anything in any given timeline should have stable order, and I have stable order, then the wilting must be coming from me. I'm destabilizing the timeline here. Which is dumb, now that I write it out, of of course it was all me. Of course this is all my fault. Of course I'm the reason Cindy turns into a pile of fucking ashes every time I try to fix everything. December 1st, 2018. Screw it. I can't get the models to work. They finished the BTTD yesterday, so I'm going back in time and getting Cindy to do it. Then we'll be able to fix everything. I just need her help. Item number SCP-5552. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. Oh, fuck it! I was wrong. Everything had wilted by the time I arrived. I drove to Site-72. The whole southern side of the building had already crumbled into black, tarry mess. There were a few guards out front to keep civilians out, but other than them, the whole site was empty. Let me back in to get my stuff. Apparently, this time, the Cronus Project made faster progress than last time. The time machine was mostly done. As a bonus, we reconstructed the walls out of that soft material we found at the GOC. I think six timelines ago now?
There's still food in the cafeteria. I think I'm going to hole up here for a while. The place still has power, probably because the Foundation doesn't want to take any risks and let something escape from here that they might have forgotten to take with them. I can't stop working. I need to fix my theory, and then I'll fix everything else. Progress is going even slower now. I don't think I can ever get the models to work for me the way Cindy did. I read through some of the reports of wilting in other parts of the world. A long stretch of land in France, two towns in Thailand, and the entirety of K2 are gone. I'm afraid that the next time I look out the window, instead of seeing the forest behind Site 72, I'll see scorched ground and crumbling trees. The soft walls here seem fitting. I think something about the material is resistant to wilting, but really it just contributes to the insane asylum feel. All I'm missing is a straitjacket. <laughs> My order theory is finally dead. And no, not because I got the models to work. The pocket watch wilted. I'd had that since I was sixteen when my grandfather gave it to me, and now it's just black dust. I'm back at square one. No theory, no models, not even someone to bounce ideas off of. I've taken to talking to myself to get my ideas out of my head, but that only works so well. It's funny, because all of the clocks in this place stopped working weeks ago. The only reliable time-telling device I have left is my computer, and honestly, I'm beginning to suspect its time zone is drifting. I googled Jonathan Wendell on a whim. Most of what I read just made me mad. Got his PhD from Stanford in theoretical physics, has tenure at Caltech, leading a joint product with Oxford on time travel, a lot of papers published, a lot of talks given. But then I started reading about his personal life. Turns out he never owned a dog. So then how did he come up with the name Wilt? I got the name originally from him, but where did he get it from? I mean, I have a theory. All I'm good for is theories. But I've been using wilting to describe the destabilization process. It's just such an accurate description for the phenomenon. Wilt. Everything turns black and then collapses, like a flower in winter. Wilting away. I remember. Cindy wanted to go back in time and do everything over again. She wanted to kick me off the project, wipe her memories, and solve the problem herself. It was a clever idea. Set up everything to be just the way you would have wanted it, and then forget what happens next so you can experience it for yourself, anew. What if I've seen all of this before? What if Cindy saw all of this before? What if the only way to stop it was to stop us from inventing time travel in the first place? We'd go back, give Wendell our research, but not the proper numbers. He'd publish first, and then perish first, when he makes the machine. We'd think our theory was wrong. We'd stop. God, we're too clever for ourselves. Except I can't prove it. I can't prove jack shit. Maybe he doesn't have a dog in this timeline, but he had a dog in that one. Or maybe he just came up with the name on his own in a happy little coincidence. It's just a theory, just another useless theory. I miss Cindy. I hate this. I have nothing. I feel close to an idea, it slips out of my fingers, and I lose my train of thought entirely. I've been here for far too long. I'm banging my head against the walls, and I don't even feel anything because they're soft. There has to be a reason. I've been able to travel back in time reliably, and yet I can't explain why. It's pathetic. I'm not used to doing this on my own. It's not like I was ever able to solve these problems on my own. It was our theory, after all. It took two of us to solve. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe the theory is mocking me for trying to solve it myself. Running me through a maze with no exit. It was kind of silly for us to think we'd be able to travel back in time in the first place, wasn't it? That we would be able to make it work, even though no one else has. Maybe things would be better without our theory. You know, that doesn't sound so bad. I have little else to lose. Item number SCP-5552 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures All SCP-5552 instances are to remain Level 4 classified. Description SCP-5552 refers to a series of six documents that appeared within the Site-72 database on 2020-4-14. All documents appear to be related to the SCP-5552 a previously unassigned SCP slot.
The documentation itself has not demonstrated anomalous properties. However, all have been tagged with an upload timestamp of 13 43 28, which has been estimated to be the same time as when Dr. Naman Gupta began a talk on the 6th International Conference on Physics titled A Comprehensive Theory on Bidirectional Temporal Travel. Investigation has been launched into possible anomalous phenomenon connected with SCP-5552. However, no conclusive evidence could be found to corroborate details within these documents. To avoid possible time continuity errors, parties mentioned within SCP-5552 were not informed, not directly questioned about the contents of SCP-5552. The main anomalous property of these documents is their unexplained appearance within the Site-72 database. Addendum SCP-5552-1 on 2020-5-2, Foundation satellites detected a large visual disturbance in Nunavut, Canada. An area of 20 acres of land had become entirely black, including all flora and fauna residing within that area. GOC resources informed the Foundation that this was the result of a catastrophic failure during an attempt to realize Dr. Naman Gupta's research. As a result of this development, Dr. Thomas Clark was directed to reopen investigation into SCP-5552. Below is Dr. Clark's interview with Dr. Cindy Halsman that took place on 2020-5-6 under the guise of a post-mortem for her Cronus project. Hello, Cindy. Hey, Thomas. I know it's been rough, uh, losing the project and all, but let's just get through this wrap-up interview quickly. Seems a little late. They reassigned me two weeks ago. It is, but you know how the bureaucracy here goes. Whatever. There isn't much to wrap up anyway. Go ahead. Does the term wilt sound familiar to you? Not really. What about a Wendell conduit? Haven't heard of that either. Am I supposed to? You're doing fine. Don't worry about it. Now, do you know a Dr. Naman Gupta? Yes. He is the lead author on the GOC paper about time travel. <clears throat> Have you actually met Dr. Gupta? Um, no. Honestly, I still haven't even seen his talk. That's understandable. Helsman sniffles. He, uh, he died recently, right? Yes, he did. There was an accident when he was testing his time machine. Huh. Helsman sniffles again and wipes her eyes. <laughs> Is everything okay, Cindy? I, I, I don't get it. You don't get what? Helsman wipes her eyes again. I'm crying, Thomas. Why am I crying... I have a theory, but I don't think it's important. Clark walks to the other side of his desk and puts an arm around Houseman. Not everything needs an explanation.
This week's episode featured the name of two of our patrons, Logan Bryson and Thomas Clark. If you're interested in hearing your name in the credits, or being a character that gets killed, maimed, or witnesses something terrifying, head over to patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And joining us this week, we have a slew of new patrons, including, but not limited to, James, Chuggle Fug, Tritropis, Dante Hawk, Max Young, AJ Real, Mike, MP, Hermit525, Frexian Ninja, Lord Vortexition, Jamie Calhoun, Dragon Gamer, Earl Konigen, Seth Osgood, Sad Phonics, Crab McShellington, John, Lauren Mayer, Storm Stange, Par Bro, Sweet, Nolan Decker, Antonio Juarez, Jacob Rose, Troy Furco, Rogan Murphy, Shane W., David Corvin, Anxiety Crochet, Alexander Almedia, Carmen Miller, and Chris Butts. Thanks for joining our patron and supporting our show. You help us do what we do. And right now, we're doing a lot. So thank you. Thank you for helping me get all possible. SCP-5552 was written by Captain Kirby. Our narrator was John Grills. Naman Gupta was Andrew Mahmood. Cindy Helsman was Alyssa Park. Specialist Bryson was Eric Kemp. Chronicler was Risa M. Recounter was Brandon Nguyen. Storyteller was Addison Peacock. And Clark was Ben Counter. Our assistant editors are Danny Sweet and Hannah McKinley. Our community manager is Celeste Cashon. This week's transcript was done by Cheyenne Bramwell, and all of our music is done by the incredible Tom Rory Parsons. Your sound designer is the ever-incredible Travis McMaster, and I'm your showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah. Our producers are Tom Owen and Brad Miska, and this is a bloody disgusting show. <laughs>